Over the past few series of rucksack and rifle, Tim has shot from high seats, off sticks, off rucksacks and freehand driven shooting. These are all very different techniques and to do yourself, your guide and your animal the justice it deserves, you need to train. You need to discover the Karma Sutra or possibly the Karma Shooter. So today Tim has invited three fellow shooters to come and shoot steel targets on his farm, but he's not going to make life easy. We're having a bit of fun this afternoon. I've got some guys down to practice their shooting. They're not quite aware of what's going on. But I put on a, a course, a shooting course, a variety of shots, and what it's all about is actually just learning, perhaps or improving our shooting skills. But I've got a, quite a, an eclectic mix of people here. Um, I've got a chap called Keith, who's a really, really good shot. I've shot them a couple of times. Don't know an awful lot about him. I've got a chap called Dom, Dom Holtram. I don't know who he is. He's some editor from some dodgy magazine. And he's actually my boss now, so be careful what I say. And I saw also I've got actually a local farmer. He lives about three miles that way on the Pemsey Marshes. He's called Robbie. But Robbie, he's a fox shooter. He's a typical farmer fox shooter. He's got a, a rifle. He just gets out and just does fox control. So I've got quite a variety of people, different experiences, different skills, and it'll be fascinating to see how they get on. So Dom is editor-in-chief of Rifle Shooter magazine, Robbie is a farmer, and Keith is a very accomplished competition shooter, stalker and rifle coach. They will have different ideas on how to approach each of Tim's four stages from the pickup to wonky posts. They can't use the same position twice, and some of the stages will be timed. Got well, a typical situation here. We're walking across the field. It could, this could be a night time, the day time, doesn't really matter. And we can be walking onto target, all right? And you can have one target um, in front of you, but unfortunately the other three targets are the other side of that gate. So I'm going to take you to the first one, and then we've got to go to that gate and shoot the other three. All right? Okay. Great. Let's crack on. So we've got a typical problem with the bipod. Is it normally the ground's a bit too high in front of you. Poise is showing off for a start. Okay, that kill. Yep. Okay, let's move on. Right, you've got three targets, Keith. And uh, you've got to hit them from three different positions. Okay. So you've got fox at the far distance there. Yep. You've, got a, you've got a frontal fox down there. Yep. And you've got something around the corner here, which you can't quite get to. And you shoot, you're going to shoot it off the gate. Okay, spot on. That sounds good. The challenge here is we've got a typical kind of gate situation. You, you come up, you spot a fox at night time in the light, in, with a spotlight, and you've got to work out exactly what position you can shoot off. So I'm just trying to get these guys to think about their shooting position. That's a hit. That's a kill. And you've got a far fox now. Spot on, great shot, well done. That's a hit, well done. So off the gates, uh, off the knees, sitting positions, they're all very stable positions, especially with a gate like this. I mean, it's, it's rock solid, so so far, so good, that's all. Did anybody else get down on the bipod and realise they couldn't see the first fox? Yes. Yeah. That's fine, okay. 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 Right boys, once again, we're, we're night shooting. Typical situation, we're out with the old uh, pickup. We want four different shooting positions. Spot well done, Robbie, that's a kill. Well done. Well done, spot on. That's a hit, well done. The truck is a climbing frame with smooth bits and ledges that can help and hinder, but it definitely yeah, it inspires debate. Oof. Then there's shot acquisition. That's a hit, well done. I just find naturally, I just naturally go to it now, boom, and I'm more or less on it. because you keep your eye on the target. A lot of people, when you get experience, you keep your eye on the target and you bring your gun and your glass with binoculars as well to the, to the eye. A lot of people who are less experienced, they're looking down at their gear, then they're back up, and that's why they can't find it. You right. keep your head still and your eye on it, and then you bring up to it. Comes up. Yeah, and, and that's what you do, and that's what yeah. people with experience do. But that whole thing of looking down, faffing about, oh, hang on, I've lost it. Yeah. That's what happens. And that's where so high mag is sometimes not your friend, exactly. not your friend. you've got such a small field of view. Yeah. Yeah. And it magnifies your rubber. Then it turns out Keith hates sticks. I think a lot of stick faff goes on the stalkers as well. I mean, I'm, I'm stick faff. Stick faff. You know they've got the, they've got the quad sticks lately, and there's this whole. Hang on a minute. 
uh, 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 and you're like, oh man, just just get on and do it. You know, and it's just too much stack fifth. And then and then there's this whole clattering noise going on and everything else. And yeah. I just think. So so, but is, but is that a go. product? Is that a product of having so much gear nowadays? Yep. Yeah, you go back to 20 years ago, you just had simplistic gear, but now we've got. You got flipping oh, range finding this twiddle deal, twiddle deal. So we have all the gear and no idea. But perhaps you know, perhaps we are, things are getting too complicated. It's where the person doesn't instinctively go up and just shoot something. I, I don't know. Agree. Just an observation. There, there are most people are, are, I shoot or take out. I shoot with a take out. They are terrified of standing unsupported. They will not do it. They'll avoid it like the plague. Yeah. In fact, they won't shoot without sticks. Period. And if you ask them, look, you know, if you've got low cover tree but you could look around the corner by kneeling down and taking a nice stable kneeling down shot they won't do it they can't they don't want can't they've never practiced kneeling down yeah. they've never practiced sitting it's standing up with sticks consistently or down with the bible and you're wasting opportunity yeah okay next up a wobbly high seat god who made this <laughs> <laughs> this is the typical high seat Jesus. from here the guys need to stretch the it's barrels well do they know enough to hold over or will they dial in then there's the That's target well just done. 25 yards away. Where do you shoot that? Hit, well done. All of the shooters do extremely hit, well, well, but done. Dom shot. takes this one. The problem target Hello. was the closest. With all that technology, the one Miss. that flummoxed them was the sitter. Hit. These scopes nowadays, we've got elevation, we've got windage adjustment, yeah. we've got parallax, yeah. we've got zoom. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the ocular focus. There's a lot of things there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. but most orcas, most field shooters don't touch most of it. Uh, they're In fact, a lot of people I know are terrified of the scope. They get it set up by a gunsmith and they don't touch it again. So, um, you know, a lot of those features are wasted. Yeah. And um, yeah, parallax is really important because if you move your head on the stock, of course, you know, effectively you're moving the cross. But parallax only really comes into, longer you know, range. longer range, 250, well, 300 yards correct, maximum. Yeah. So well, really, or, or it's much shorter because the air, yeah. air gun boys That's really cool. like to have yeah. those low yeah. adjusting yeah. parallax. That's so. how they do their range estimation, isn't it? When yeah. it's in focus as well. Yeah. So, um, so what about um, magnification? Because I know a lot of people are, they just all they do is they work on high mag all the time. The mag. Yeah, and, you know. actually, I think I used to be guilty of that. I'd be sort of 25 power, sort of you know, deer stalking. But the thing is, for follow up shots and so forth, you know, I really wanted to count the hairs on the animal and watch it yeah. going. But the, for follow up shots and so forth, the field of view so limited, you know, you tend to tend to wind out. So um, I think uh, it's more a question of uh, of thinking about the use case for because for, for competition, um, you, you know, you use high mag, you wind your mag on. Yeah. Um, as well, so it depends on the uh, absolutely on the use case. I think I don't think anyone dials for windage when hunting in the field, even long range rabbits, things at 400, 500 yards. Yeah. I think you're you're holding off, but you're certainly dialing for elevation yeah. at those sort of ranges and precise targets. So, so on this one, Don, if I use you as a guinea pig, for a start, you you want you zoomed out a wee bit. Yeah, yeah? So I think I was probably yeah. on about four well, or five times okay. magnification, just because everyone else had, had, had struck low. And, and I probably would have been guilty of that if I hadn't watched the others because I'm thinking it's around about 25 yards. Yeah. I was always told that, you know, 25 yards zero is similar to 100 yards zero. So I would have, I would have probably thought the strike would be yep. close too. And I would have probably missed low. So I ended up aiming kind of halfway up its ears. So, so from that point of view, is why is a 30 or 25 meter target so hard to hit? So what's so, so on the, from the ballistics and the trajectory, whereabouts is that? That we, that's it's caught three of you out today, or two of you out. If you think about your scope, you know your bullet is every, your, your bullet path is not going up. People think it's, it's kind of going up, but of course it isn't. It's just describing a parabolic arc, yeah. right? But your scope is intercepting that at, at your zero point. Mm. Um, and usually, as we just said, you know, normally for 100 yards here, you expect it roughly to be about 25 yards and 100 yards. Mm. It should be roughly about right, but we were all we were mm. all low. Yeah. So um, uh, it does catch people out. I think you end up uh, thinking. You've got to you've got to uh, compensate a little bit too much, or that you aim dead on because yeah. it's 25 yards. So yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where familiarity with your gun and your ammunition yeah. and your scope is, is important. Because just because you've read something on the internet or you've seen somebody else yeah. say something, it might not necessarily apply to your setup mm. and the height of your scope above your bore, the ammunition that you use. So I think again, it's another illustration of how valuable it is to spend mm. some time practicing and getting to know your your kit. The third stage is sticks, and they're going to have to think carefully about how they mix it with the sticks. We've got a tripod here, uh, which you can use as a bipod as well. So, you know, that's a fairly common thing we use. Most people use those. And we've got a, actually a pair of quad pods, which are, I think in the last three or four years, have become very, very popular, and they're very, very useful. They give you a lot more stable shooting position, uh, and they're very versatile as well. So I think what we need to do is perhaps try them out once again, 
We are going to be shooting from these stakes, well done, but Robbie, four well different shooting positions. Yeah. See, what I'd do here is I'd crawl on my belly until I was close enough to shoot it off the <laughs> bipod pin. <laughs> so, and also, you've got another row stuck up behind the trees, though. Okie dokie. Well done. Good hit. Great shot. Well done. Great shot. I have to say, <laughs> I, I generally dislike shooting from sticks. I was always very short on confidence, but the quad sticks and um, cheating, though they may be, according to Keith, um, make a massive difference in terms of confidence and stability. And where I uh, live in Lincolnshire, where it's very flat, sometimes if you you know if you're shooting rabbits with the rim fire, just an extra three or four feet of elevation can make a difference between a safe shot and no shot at all. Yeah. Um, so really useful. I have kind of improved, I have or tried to develop a bit more of a technique, although I'm sure it still looks awful uh, and I'll be put right. From Keith Stick Hater Poiser, we have a bit of technical assessment about how to use and not abuse the Bob sticks. Well Six, as with anything, they just add support to your position. So you shouldn't change anything about your position when you add support to it. So uh, if you're sitting, for example, you know, elbows on knees, your sticks, if you're using sticks, just take the weight of the rifle. You're not doing anything else that is different. Same for standing uh, and for kneeling. So with this um, system, you know, you see some people with sticks that they're, they're hunched right over it or they're, you know, they've got an exaggerated position, like that, whatever it is. If you shoot in, the, in, in, is a little short for me at the moment, but it's easily adjustable, I guess. So, you know, if I stand like this and shoot standing then I want to stay in that position or thereabouts with sticks it just takes the weight of the rifle and that's what gives the stability I don't do anything artificial aids take the weight of the rifle they shouldn't make you do anything artificial in your positions at all and that will give you greater accuracy <laughs> lastly it's, it's Tim's pie-eyed posts each position works best for one of the targets in front yep. but which for which and how to keep stable so you can pick the most unstable one perhaps for the closest target, but I'll leave you that to decide. The shot. Stop. It's a miss, try again. Spot on. These posts here are just typical things we kind of fox shoot at deer stalkers use all the time. That's just tree, stump, and, and that's what it's all about. We just need to practice in different positions, not just off a bipod, perhaps. You yeah. know? And some of these positions are not very comfortable, but yes, you can take a, a quite a, a, a good shot, a, a, an accurate shot with it. You know? you know, also, I don't think any of us, if we, if we said, oh, I'm going to have an hour down the range, would have gone to this much trouble um, or spent this long doing it. But actually, when there's a group of people and you can learn from other people and you can have a bit of banter and a bit of a bit of a giggle while you're doing it, I think I think that, that's what makes it. It's been an interesting experiment and all the shots have discovered something new. You don't have to have acres of land to do this, just some imagination and a desire to give you and your rifle some special time.